So when we are under chronic stress, there, as you mentioned, there's a few uh, chemicals that tend to be at higher levels circulating in our body. One of those is adrenaline and the other is cortisol. Now adrenaline can be very important for us um, in very unique situations. For instance, if we're in a fight or flight response, we're walking through the woods and we see an animal that could potentially harm us, we automatically engage. We don't have to do anything. This is part of our autonomic nervous system. It will release adrenaline. And some of the things that happens when adrenaline is released is it dilates our blood vessels. It gets oxygen to the muscles in case we have to use them for fighting purposes. So, um, and, and it also, it does enhance the immune system um, in the acute setting. So I want people to understand that there is an appropriate amount of adrenaline that can be used for good. It's when we have this higher level of adrenaline being released on a chronic basis, uh, which can hamper the cardiovascular system to function at a high level. So what ends up happening is um, we can develop an increased heart rate uh, over time, an increase in our blood pressure over time because of this consistent amount of adrenaline that's being released. And that can and most often times will negatively impact uh, a person's well-being because of their heart rate elevation, because of their blood pressure can lead to uh, heart disease, cardiovascular disease. So when we release cortisol, um, it, what it can do is it can take the protein that we've consumed in our diet that for purposes of producing energy, it, cortisol will convert protein into carbohydrates, i.e. sugar. Sugar, if it is not burned immediately, will be stored as fat, which is incredibly inflammatory. So over time, higher levels of cortisol increase our body's overall level of inflammation. And it's that high level of inflammation that leads to chronic things like diabetes, heart disease, cancers, infections. So anything that we can do to minimize excess cortisol in the long run will help us live a much healthier life, lower our overall level of inflammation, and help us to avoid uh, chronic diseases. So exercise helps reduce stress in several different ways. One way that it helps reduce stress is it increases our le uh, oxygen level that not only circulates throughout our body, but also in our brain. So enhancing oxygen is a great stress reliever. So what happens when we do that? Not only are we increasing oxygen to our, our brain cells, we are increasing the release of endorphins, which are uh, natural painkillers. So when you, for instance, uh, will talk to a runner, or maybe you are a runner, people will say that they get to a certain point in their routine where they feel that runner's high. That's because your body is releasing its natural endorphins, which helps us feel good, reduces stress, and allows us to feel healthier. The other way that it helps is it will increase levels of certain neurochemicals in the brain, uh, it being exercise, which include, the chemicals include um, norepinephrine, adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin. And those are um, chemicals that are very important in how we are able to reduce anxiety, reduce feelings of depression or dysthymia, kind of the blues. And so exercise is a terrific way that we can and should help to lower uh, daily stress. When we have periods of being solitary, if we have uh, a feeling of isolation, if we live alone, um, there can be an overwhelming amount of sadness that's associated with that. Um, that feeling of sadness uh, can also uh, increase the feelings of stress. When we are solitary for a period of time, we uh, unfortunately will overuse the amount of adrenaline that's circulating in our body. We will overuse the amount of cortisol. Again, so this comes back to the idea of um, increasing heart rate, increasing blood pressure, converting protein to carbohydrate, which is then stored as fat. It becomes a uh, vicious cycle of not only uh, feeling sad um, and mentally feeling impaired, but our physical well-being is also um, impacted because of that uh, solitary uh, nature or feeling of loneliness. If someone is suffering from any type of traumatic event at any point in their life, I think it's really important to seek help 
from a psychologist, psychiatrist, social worker, even your family physician, and try to develop a plan of action that will allow that person, that uh, uh, um, individual, to um, get the help that they need.